Well, somewhere in the world, guys are going to work. Well, works for guys that don't know how to fish. <laughs> Six beers left in a 12 pack. 12 hours left in a day. Marvin, I got a one out of 10. <laughs> How'd you get the one? <laughs> I am the king of all you see Inside these shanty walls My castle I will never leave Except when the heat took off Yeah, things was like they are on the boob tube They'd be different than they are Take two, take two Yeah, but you know though, Marv There's only two times that I like to eat fish Yeah, when it's snowing And when it's not <laughs> This is a very simple play About two guys Here, like no. This is Marvin. Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Marvin, yeah, yeah. They just totally love each other, are there for each other. Here. What's this? Lawyer. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The strips from the back of the fish is top drawer. And then with all the stuff going on in their lives, there's this place that they can, like, escape to, connect with. When you're not feeling strong, life is short. Winter's long, seasons turn as they roll. We, we all need a wishing hole. There's an honesty to it, a simplicity. It's profound in its simplicity and it's really, really funny. Hey, you know what? Yep. Do you know how the ice fishermen are catching bear up in Canada? No, how's that? Yeah, they use a can of peas. Yeah. Hey, you see, they drill a hole in the ice and yeah. they put peas around it. Yeah. When a bear comes up to take a pee, they kick him in the ice hole. <laughs> Guys on Ice was written by Fred Alley, the book and the lyrics, and composed by James Kaplan. Fred Alley was one of our most prolific writers, and he was one of the founders of AFT. Well, in the mid-1990s, uh, Fred Alley and I were both writing plays for the theater, and he mentioned he was interested in writing a show maybe about ice fishing, and I said, yeah, I've been thinking about that too. It, I had gotten kind of bogged down in writing another show, and so I was too busy at that point to pursue writing Guys on Ice with Fred, and he ended up taking over the project. Unfortunately, Fred died uh, when he was very young. He was only 38 years old, and it was only a, a couple of years after he wrote Guys on Ice. What if you knew life was through today? What is one day worth? What would you do with your last day on Earth? Fred Alley was a brilliant person that we all profoundly respected. He had astonishing talents, and even though he could have gone to New York and been the lead in Broadway Productions, he was that good. Fred chose to continue coming back here and working in a state park in northern Wisconsin. Uh, to honor the thing that we had all created together. And I think that um, that theme of the ambivalence about fame is a central theme of the show. I suppose that this whole TV thing, it's really no big deal, huh? Eh? Eh? Man, no big deal. No big deal. It's, it's not having these huge houses or being famous on TV. It's, if you want to get soapy and about it, it's, it's love. We all want love. Why did you go? Why won't you stay? Don't be the one that got away. I think one of the reasons the show is great is it's not just funny. It really is about the fact that life is short and life is precious. In the wink of an eye, we could be pulled up to the pie in the sky far away. Where the angel fish fly In the sweet by and by And the skies are not cloudy all day Well, in 1970, a professor at the University of Wisconsin named Dave Peterson uh, was up here vacationing with his family and noticed that there was a beautiful amphitheater in the park where they would put on uh, ranger talks and so on about 
naturalist kinds of things. And he thought it would be a perfect spot to do performances. So he founded something called the Heritage Ensemble. And he really wanted to celebrate the heritage of uh, Wisconsin, the Great Lakes, and really kind of the culture uh, through music. When Dave retired in 1990, um, we reincorporated as a nonprofit called the American Folklore Theater. We kind of began doing original musicals and then renamed the troupe the Northern Sky Theater in uh, 2015. We're very lucky to be at Peninsula State Park, which is really, many people consider the jewel of the Wisconsin State Park system. It's a beautiful amphitheater out in the middle of the park where we're sitting. The surrounding towering pines and other trees, the openness to the night sky, you know, so the, the setting itself is profoundly relaxing and comforting for people. There are theaters that are outdoors, and there are theaters that do musicals, but there's something about the, the feeling here that's just unique. But out here where the day begins, they had things to share. One of the reasons we're so unique and it's been successful is we have a very, very strong community here. Neen Rock was part of the production very early on, and she's remained our production stage manager since the mid-1980s. She's still working here. Uh, Fred's brother, Dave Alley, is our tech director, and he's been doing that since the mid-1980s. Doug Mancheski has been here, I think, since 1997. Lee Becker has been here since 94. We've coalesced, and we've all grown into a culture of support. When I'm sitting in the pit, I get to watch Steve and Doug do their thing night in and night out. Um, and I'm never bored watching them, again, because they just live in these characters and make it feel like it's happening for the first time. There's these, these stretches of like an hour on stage where my only thought is how much, like what a joy it is to be up here with this guy that I, that I love, this buddy of mine. And his goofy, weird ways that are Doug, but they're also Marvin. You know, when you do a show so many times, you can actually enter a zone where you're not worrying about the music or the lines. You can just be. And that is such a, a liberating feeling that I think few actors get. Fred would always say, um, besides Marvin and Lloyd, and of course Ernie, there's another character in the play. It's the audience. I was thinking if I would leave here, I think the, the thing I would miss the most here is, is the audiences. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll be appearing at the Anata Casino with my very good friend, Mr. Bud. They are so loving. They just give love. I just feel so much love on that uh, stage. A lot of families who come to Door County, they coalesce around this place because it's, it feels like it's theirs. They can grow up together watching this theater company and then they can bring their grandchildren. That constant role of the generations who just keep filtering through here is the magic. And it's the thing that we hook into. It's the thing that we love about it. Having lived in New York and traveled around a lot, I've just come to really value and appreciate what makes Wisconsin special as a place and the people special. And that's what this company's always been about is writing these shows that that take normal folks and ennoble what their life is about. And this show is, is just the touchstone for that. Not much to show though for a day of fishing. <laughs> no skunk. Jeez. But the last time I caught a trout that weighed 25 pounds. Yeah, well, I caught a lantern and when I pulled her out, she was still lit. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll take 15 pounds off the trout if you blow out the lantern. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> night, night. See you on the ice. See you on the ice, Mark. Yeah. <laughs>